have a lot of um, AV equipment, and it's not because we thought we would have a hard time communicating to you, but we wanted to record this as well as stream this. So, fingers crossed. Uh, yeah, we'll goes. see if this all works out. Yeah, or not. <laughs> yeah, we've got a million chords going on up here. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, we've done a presentation similar to this with other chapters, and um, this is really obviously informal. Um, you probably don't have podcasters talk to you a lot, um, and so we look forward to a conversation and some fun. Absolutely, and, and you're in a bar, we're in a bar, we all got our drinks. Does anyone not have a drink? This is like last call before we get started in terms of getting a drink. Um, so, all right, I think, we're, I think we're ready to go. All right. All right. All right. So, uh, what, do we, what do we have here? Okay, wit and wisdom. Wit and wisdom from, from the two of us. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you, you guys will be the judge of that. So, it says. Yeah, so. Okay, so, uh, first of all, we want to thank you guys. So, this is our uh, region-friendly uh, graphic. Yes, we know it's Greensboro, but, you know, we, we are in the triad, not just in Winston. Um, so we want to thank the AIJ chapter, and we also want to thank Foothills and Footnotes specifically for putting this, this on today. So we're, we're really excited. You doing all right? I'm okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, you know. All right. Um, so uh, let's get started. What do you say? All right. Sounds good. All right. Um, so let's have some fun. So, um, of course, it's been a while that maybe we've we've... You know, you mentioned we did one similar yeah. event, and of course it was a uh, it was um, it was it was a streaming event, and so as a result of that, we we don't always know what the rules are in terms of getting together in person, and sometimes you know we need to get the crowd worked up. I think, mm -hmm. right? Do so crowd work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So we got a, we got a hype man here to help us out. Look! 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 Where's our Where's our audio? <laughs> what happened to our audio? Uh, why don't you press record and see where? Man, I don't know. Fire the engineer. I know. We got. We got all. That kinds was a great of, lead up to. We got all kinds of. We got all awesome kinds lead of issues. Up we got all kinds of issues tonight. So we'll just go back. Let's go back and we'll re-record that. Later. All right, we'll record that. Hold great. on. Hold great. on. Hold on. Let's see. Let's figure this out. This is why we're among friends. We got to figure this out. We all like right. to see the sauce. Yeah, you did. You get to see a lot. The sausage, the sausage. Sausages. Maybe. I was going to say there's a lot of sausage. But yeah. <laughs> 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 hey, tip your waiters. That's right. We'll be here all week. All right. Let's see. Uh, I'll shuffle while you're doing the engineering thing here. Okay, yeah, entertain them. Uh, do what you need to do. What do yeah. we need to do? Well, uh, let's see. Uh, where are you from? <laughs> Western Salem! Oh, Yay. awesome! How far is that from here? <laughs> That's great! Right. Jared, where are you from? Oh, we ready? Never mind. Jared. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Let's, okay. we'll, we'll give it a go. All right. We'll give it a go. All well, right. we have to get the audio sorted out because we actually do have an audio component to this thing. So it's not just, as much as we love Animal House, it's not just about Animal House. Yeah. So let's see what we get. Tonga! Tonga! Success! Yeah. All right. So now, yeah. now we are ready to right. ready to go. Right? Okay. Yep. We're ready to go. Okay. All right. Back to there we go. We were totally screwed up. That's all right. Okay. So um, today we're going to share three things with you. Just three things. Three simple things. So a little bit about us. Mm -hmm. It's pretty self-explanatory, mm -hmm. right? Um, a little bit about the podcast. Because you're here for the podcast. You're not just here for us. It's charming and good looking as we both are, right? Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. It happens to that. guys your age. Yeah, it does. It does. I've heard there are pills. Okay. And then a little bit about how we find uh, inspiration and we work together as team. Oh, you edited this? <laughs> oh, it was well, going to be asshole singular. But. No. Well, it's two creative yeah, people. Yeah, how yeah, they work together as two, two creative people. Oh, there's four things. We're designers, we're yeah, bad yeah. at math, so as it turns out, there will be an opportunity for audience participation as we go, but also some Q&A uh, at the end, right? Right, right. Okay. Uh, so there's the first part. Oh, 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 oh I'm, I'm jumping ahead. I'm already jumping ahead. I'm jumping ahead, I'm jumping ahead. All right, so the other thing we're doing is we're gonna have audience participation. Now, the chapter was good enough to buy some of our stuff. So um, 
We don't think all of it was stolen. We think some of it actually made it here tonight. So as a result, uh, ask good questions, participate, and we have some uh, swag for you guys. So, um, so yeah, okay, so it did make it. So that's, that's really good. So not that we don't trust the chapter, but you know. All right, so a little bit about Elliot and me. Um, the classic, is it, you guys are, right? Well, that's right, and this is, and you are, so we, we kind of wanted to define a little bit of why you are allowing us to stand up here in front of you. Um, so, uh, Elliot and I worked together eons ago and um, had a great working relationship, and over the course of uh, the pandemic, I was cleaning my porch and we were talking on the phone and we said, we're so funny, we're so clever, <laughs> we should do a podcast, and we lo and behold, because of Elliot, we did. Um, but we're uh, both heavily involved uh, within the, the design and communication uh, advertising industry. I'm from Raleigh. Um, uh, Elliot obviously is from Winston-Salem. Uh, we both have been teachers. Uh, we are obviously working professionals, and we both have been former presidents of our respective chapters. I was very temporary. So people wised up fast. And I was a shitty president, so we were perfect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but speaking of speaking of working together for a while, I wanted to share this photo of Todd uh, back when we <laughs> back when we first started working together. So this is in the this is in the days of this is design BI or design before internet. Um, and so Todd, what are you what are you working? I'm laying out my living Bible and ping pong ads, as you can tell there. Right, that was a good deal, eight dollars. For the, for the living Bible. Oh. Is, that, is that back when you were working for Jesus? Yeah, that's right. Je oh. Jesus and the ping pong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But, <laughs> the official sport of the Vatican, isn't it? Ping pong? <laughs> yes. Now, now, this is, actually, as it turns out, this was, that was taken, what, two weeks ago? Yeah, it was. But there's a real story about our collaboration. There, there really um, is. There is. Then, uh, so we get to, we're going to start off. Um, one of the wonderful rules of speaking is to humble ourselves in front of our audience. And this is that part. Um, you go ahead. I thought this was the part about how we won an award. Yeah. Well. Okay. You be so, the judge. All right. Yeah. You, yeah. This is this is when this is when they played fast and loose. Yeah. With the uh, award criteria. So, um, the cast your mind back. Speaking of before internet, there used to be a magazine called How. Now How is like a website or a conference or something. And anyway, they used to have an annual. So this is like twenty something years ago now. And we wanted to point out a page in this annual. Um, we want to point out an amazing poster in this annual that we love. And it's right here. And it's by our buddy, uh, Charles S. Anderson. You guys Show know Chuck Anderson? You guys know Chuck Anderson? You, you, guys were, you right? got that poster. That yeah. frame. Awesome. Uh, I bet, bet you don't bet have you, it. If you bring it tonight, uh, so, you know, we, we could sign this poster. Because <laughs> you're not going to want the poster we're about to well, talk Chris, about. Well, Chris, this story is going to make you a lot happier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, made, you made the right buying you decision made the right in terms choice. of the options you were given on this page. Yeah. Because we want to talk about the super shitty poster <laughs> we did. You know, we're they, right they, there beside they, they say, you know, like, like, like this was this was our brush with greatness right here. So this this poster. Um, now we this we need to really. I think people can kind of see it, but I think we need to blow it up. Yeah, let's let's to, hit it out. All right, all right. This is this is it. Okay, okay down, you, back you, everybody. Wanted see, you wanted to see award winning design. Drink it up. Okay. <laughs> Not just the photograph of the poster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can see even like, so I literally scanned this from the annual because like Todd and I destroyed the all actual. So like, do you see like the press hickey like in yeah. this and like the general sheen? So this was like back when you had to like take slides of your work and then mail in slides and then the magazine would scan the slide. So like, I think the photography actually is the best part of this whole thing. It's one of the more redeeming parts. <laughs> okay, of it. But why so, don't you tell the story? Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then Todd's going to provide editorial sidebar because yeah. this poster, probably to this day, um, this is this is a presentation slash counseling session yeah. for me because this poster is the bane of my existence. Cross <laughs> to bear. Okay. So we were doing, this is when we were working in-house at Glaxo, at the time Glaxo Welcome, now Glaxo Smith Klein. And... 
they had a food drive. So this is, you know, hey employees, come in, bring your food, we'll donate it to a local food bank so they needed a way to like prompt people to, to take action. And we had a bunch of great ideas. This was not one of them. Exactly. <laughs> so, so as a joke, as a joke, we were sitting around brainstorming and we were coming up with all the terrible food puns you could possibly think of and we decided to like cram them all into a single poster. As a joke, like have I mentioned this as a joke, for the, for the client, right? So we, we present the real posters, and then Todd, I think it, Todd's like, well, we have this one poster we want to present to you, ha ha, it's a joke, whatever, like blah, 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 blah. And we place it on the table. As soon as we place it on the table, the client's eyes widen, <laughs> and she pulls it towards her, and she's like, Yes, this <laughs> is it. This is perfect. And, and so, can I press pause for a second? Yes. So, mistake one, right? Should not have made a fun never poster. Should have <laughs> mistake two, Take never should have presented it to the client. You see, I'm but drinking, I'm drinking now. I know. But we didn't stop there. Mm. We said, you know what would be extra funny is if we entered this into a. Well, but, uh, <laughs> so. Some, some of us thought that. Some of us. Some of us aren't, weren't aware that was happening. But before we get into that, <laughs> I think uh, we need to read the copy yeah, from ahead. this. Okay, so this is, so you can see the little hot dog guy. You drew that. Or Craig ever did that? Okay, Craig O'Brien, who's not with us tonight, um, he drew that. So we were sitting around. He's he another uh, designer of the group. So <laughs> this, is our, this is our brilliant copywriting to match our brilliant art. Hot dog, it's time for a food drive. So that's the, that's the lead in, right? Because, I mean, hey, why not? Nothing get, much more to say. Get your buns moving. You <laughs> must have heard we need to catch up before we're in a pickle. <laughs> so that's. The one so called. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so then you, you can take the story from here. So, allegedly, this was a while ago. I don't have quite as good a memory. I entered it into how. It somehow got to how. I don't know how, but it did. <laughs> Which um, I never knew any of this. So, at the time, as Alex said, we were working in house for a giant pharmaceutical company, and we were doing some great stuff. Uh, that was showing up in award books, um, in CA, in print, and in other issues of how. And I think just as a goof, we said, hey, uh, you know, let's just blow some money and see what happens with this. Uh, and that's what happened. Um, and we couldn't even manage to get a good photo of a shitty poster. So, um, so let's move on from this because we yes. have moved on. We yeah, moved yeah, on. yeah. The therapy's worked. Todd and I aren't speaking terms again. Yeah. And um, we've actually uh, got back in the saddle and we did do posters. So um, some of you may be familiar with this. This is a poster I did once upon a time for um, Krispy Kreme. Um, and it, it fared better than the, <laughs> than the food bank poster did. It's a beautiful poster. And then uh, to show you some of the work that um, I had done, I did a, a campaign for classic graphics about preventing attacks of the undead. Uh, so mine was basically a PSA. It wasn't that commercial bullshit that Elliot was doing. <laughs> mine, I'm mine was helping the public. I'm a sellout. That's fine. So I did, yeah, I did a poster with steps to how to protect yourself from zombies and um, vampires and stuff. So we did know how to do what we think are good posters, ultimately. But that's enough about that stuff, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, let's, let's, let's keep let's going. Move on. Let's keep going. Okay. So, question. Question for the audience. This is our first question of the night. What do these three things have in common? 1967. Oh, that's a great guess. I, that might be right. Yeah. <laughs> you, did, you did not intend for that to be right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, forget that. What else yeah, do these things have? Now, he gets something. Okay, give him something for that. Yeah, that's what else? Okay, I heard some other moments. They're cultural icons. Oh, that's a great guess as well. Um, the answer, from our point of view, is nothing. Nothing. <laughs> it's, it's, it's stuff that we like. And what we found was there was a vacuum of this slice of pop culture. Um, well, Milton Glaser, he's done okay for himself. But Mad Magazine, not 
very well represented. Um, the best show ever to be on television, Batman 66. So best television show, not equally represented. So this is what we wanted to pick up on. Yeah, so, um, and this really sort of echoes what we're all about, what we try to be all, all about in terms of like, we definitely take our work seriously, but we don't take ourselves seriously. We try to approach things with a sense of humor. Um, you be the judge, you guys have been laughing, so the alcohol must be working, because it's probably not our jokes. Yeah. Um, but we, we do have a, what, a deep desire, uh, you know, caring for design and for creativity, um, and a gag reflex when we hear people bloviate about like the, the sort of clinical traditional design stuff, right? Because let's like show of hands, like designs didn't everybody get into this because it was fun, because everybody loved to draw and just like vibe on stuff like this. Like we gotta, we can't forget to celebrate this stuff, right? Right. Um, so we believe being creative is both a gift and a state of mind, right? And you gotta keep feeding that. Um, okay, so. All right, so tiny bit about us. Next is kind of a podcast. Why a podcast? Why do you think, I'd love to get your thoughts, why do you think we started a podcast? To share your ideas with your community. That's a great idea. Yeah, we didn't think that one. Yeah. That's, that's a great idea. idea. Yeah, what else? Is someone taking notes? Because we need to write. Should, These are actually good ideas we should be writing down. I mean, ideas is life experiences. Yeah, okay. You were drunk one night and thought it was a cookie idea and you decided to do it. And There's the idea. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, I'll, I'll, try. Try. I'll, I'll, All right. I'll buy that for a month. <laughs> um, true. So, what we wanted to do, as we kind of said before, is capture that spirit of stuff that we love growing up, um, pop culture related design icons that we didn't feel ashamed about saying that we loved and we appreciated, and most importantly, it inspired us. The vernacular inspires us because it's human and it's real and it's got a lot of quality to it that sometimes we don't see as much today. So these things, aside from being special memories to us and giving us a chance to kind of dig into them and walk down memory lane and to share that with other people, it was a way for us to go, hey, wait a minute, you know, we can connect the dot from here to there to there to there, and all of a sudden we started seeing how things were fitting together. And, you know, podcasting might be a little bit odd in the sense that what we do is generally visual and podcast is audio-based, right? But what we discovered and what we love is these stories that are behind all of these things that you see in the world and you just kind of take for granted, right? They've always just sort of been there. Um, so we're like the behind the music of pop culture. We, we are, we are. We're, we're, we're digging, digging up the dirt. Um, so as many of you know, uh, first of all, thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for everybody who's listening. We have a podcast, of course, Two Designers Walk Into a Bar. This is uh, the website. And so it's a podcast, as, as Todd just alluded to, it's about design, but also about popular culture and how these artifacts exist in popular culture. So it's experiential and it's centered around storytelling. That's a big part of what we do. And that's a big part of what we do in our professions anyway, right? So uh, we give ourselves the freedom to explore interesting stories of how famous or iconic or well-known things came to be, right? So that's a pretty broad landscape. So we definitely had to put some bumpers on mm -hmm. it, right? Um, so here's uh, one example of a couple objects. So what do these two things have in common? And, and by two things, I mean like, this, like not the ad, although the ad's certainly part of it. If you've listened to our podcast, you would probably know this. Highways? Yeah, good, good one. Getting there? Yep. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Curves. What's that? Curves. Sure. Curves on the highway? Yeah. <laughs> retro. Yeah. Definitely retro. Obviously iconic. Um, we don't need a lot of explanation for each one of these because we all have a built-in story for them. Right. But the, this, these are from our episode on uh, roadside beauties. So we did an episode that was all about these beautiful old signs that when you were growing up, 
back when things were still much more regionalized and the, and the zoning laws weren't what they are today and, and the, the highways really just weren't these bland interstates but they kind of you know went closer to cities, you would start to see things like the Union 76 ball and you would start to see, and I distinctly remember this from when I was a little kid in the 70s and the 80s, the, the, the sign, the Holiday Inn sign, right? And, and the founder, by the way, here's, here's a little bit of, of a nugget related to this story. They loved, he loved this sign. I mean, he loved this sign to the point, and I'm not making this up, this sign is chiseled on this guy's tombstone. Like, that's how much he loved this sign. We kept, uh, we kept waiting for Debbie Millman to do an episode on these. <laughs> she hasn't done it Go ahead. Man, I'm talking smack. I'm <laughs> talking, talking, talking that was design very podcast and smack. Um, so we wanted to make the stories not just for designers, although designers will certainly find things they love in them, but the stories are really more about pop culture. And, you know, it wasn't only designers that drove past these things, it was all of us, right? We all need to get gas. We all have stayed at hotels. And so we all have this common shared experience. And where did these things come from, right? Like quite literally, the founder of the company of Holiday Inn devised this sign. This, Todd, you want to tell the story of where this first made an appearance? Uh, at the World's Fair, 1964 World's Fair, and the guy was saying, hey, you know what, This we're pavili our, the pavilion's right in the middle of everything, we can't have just a one-sided or two-sided sign. He had a brilliant idea, let's make it a sphere, which, you know, was like, because so this rotated. It rotated. It, ro it, it, you know, it, was, it was like 18 feet wide. This, this, you know, the lights went around it like a marquee, and then the neon and the, the star sparkled, right? So it like had this animation. And there was another little thing you guys may have heard of that debuted the same time the 76 ball uh, did, and that was the Space Needle. So this was the same World's Fair in Seattle that the Space Needle debuted. So, um, so just to give you a little bit of an idea as it relates to that, that context, right? Move on to the next slide. Yeah. So um, we're available wherever. So you know we try to be um, omnipresent on all the different platforms. So whatever you're used to listening with, like we're there. So um, and we love, as Ellie said, we love to tell stories. We're hardwired to to tell these stories. We have a little bit of an addiction to Wikipedia. Uh, myself, I. I'm Todd, I have an addiction to Wikipedia. Yeah, it's Wikipedia Anonymous, right? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Um, and because it's a rabbit hole. And what we like to do is, and we'll go into this a little bit more later, is uh, find that, that, like I said, the behind the scenes part of the, these stories and make them interesting to people that are not designers. Okay, so we're always looking for new sources of inspiration, but um, rather than just tell you how we do it, we, we thought again we'd give you guys a little bit of a peek behind the curtain and show you some of the magic about um, how we discover our next idea. So let's see if this is working. Uh, Todd, it's <laughs> As I said, Wikipedia, um, periodicals, encyclopedias, you name it, old postcards, um, Elliot's family gatherings, um, some of those. That's me in the there. back with the glasses. Yeah, that, I'm, I don't know why you didn't want to share your bathing suit, but it's okay. You know um, what, and there's Todd uh, waiting for me in his car, he drove me there. I had candy. Um, <laughs> junk stores, um, junk stores. Uh, old records. I mean, same thing that you go to for inspiration. We're going there for, in this case, story inspiration. Absolutely. And uh, we get to make cool stuff for people like you guys, right? So again, ask good questions, get loot. 
So keep, keep that in mind. All right, so where do these ideas come from? This is, uh, what I wanna know from you is when you're having conversations with your friends about just stuff, I, what comes up? Like things you can share with me now. Like, I'll, I'll give you for instance, let's have the first one, Elliot, as a for instance. One of your favorite movies is. So what other stuff like that do you talk about? Like what do you talk about with friends, coworkers? Travel. Travel, yeah, places you've been, right. things you've seen, books you've read. TV shows. Music. That's right, music. Yeah, all good. Absolutely. All right, yeah. Do you remember that song about? Um, I heard that when this photo was taken, so think about iconic images that are in our, our culture, right? Um, I would see this poster everywhere growing up, and by that we mean the, the, the hot dog poster. Yeah, the hot dog poster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my dreams. I remember that when I was. Um, travel, I was right? When I yeah. took a trip to. Um, I love this cereal, right? Like, do you remember all the goofy cereals of the 70s and 80s before parents got wise? Um, and then, or I was reading a story about, right, when you stumble upon something online or in a magazine and there's like, huh, I never knew this about that, or like you were saying earlier, uh, Wikipedia. So we thought this might be limited topics and we started keeping a list. Um, and so here's a, a little bit of the list. That's right. Yeah. This is like, you know how they say that on the road was that one continuous scroll? So we're working on our version of on the road, which is all our ideas. And But in all seriousness, we, we'll like text each other, we'll email each other, we'll keep a rolling Google Doc going. So we probably have a Google Doc. How many ideas would you say are on the Google Doc? Oh, we have? three, four. Five. I think five I, think I have yeah, one maybe. today. All right. so yeah. good. But also personal experiences like um, Elliot with um, his uh, sweater here with his name on it. So That's my turtleneck. It's, so not, it's, a, so it's not a sweater. So he knew who he was. Yeah. Um, and his mom had ironed on the Cooper Black letters, which is right. uber cool at the time. Yeah, so um, that's the Tootsie Roll type phase yeah. for those that's who right. don't know, right? The and it's kind of cool making a comeback. We did a Black podcast. Coming back. Podcast halfway about Cooper Black and halfway about Uber for you type nerds. This was, my parents bought me these letters. Um, my last name is Coates, so that's what the C means. Um, and I had kept that for, oh gosh, a number of years. So, um, so it was like this magical moment where like, God, what about Cooper Black, can we say? Right. Um, all right. Do you remember the basic five W's of journalism? Who, what, what, where, why, yeah, I was like, what was the last one? <laughs> Ellie, said, Ellie said how, and I was like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that, that came later, sometimes why. Um, so that's basic storytelling, and we do some of that. We have to do that, obviously, for contextual reasons, yep. to put people in place. But for us, the behind-the-scenes magic is... It's what we call a what? Um, so it's that thing that you didn't know. Like you've seen blueberry cereal forever, but maybe you didn't know how it got its name. And there's a funny story, and there's usually death and murder and drugs involved. We, we might embellish a little bit. I'm just kidding, we don't, we don't do that. But for us, it's the what that makes the story listenable and makes it sticky. Um, so we'll give you an example of what that would be. Two examples, actually. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, show of hands, does anyone not know what movie this is from? Yeah. So everyone knows this logo, right? So what is it? Yell it out. Ghostbusters. All right. And and by that I mean that 1984 original, not subsequent sequels, bastardizations, reboots. I'm a Ghostbusters purist, people. I'm not ashamed to admit that. Um, so everybody knows this because it is just in our collective memory. Like again, this is one of these things that we've been talking about. How many derivative logos with a slash or with some other character over the years have we seen, right? But this is the thing that kicked it all off. Okay, so we did an episode that actually included this logo in it. And so there's a couple little tidbits about it very quickly that I wanna share that I'll be honest with you, I did not know before doing the research about this. All I knew was I loved this logo and loved the movie. Um, so the first tidbit is this was the only thing, if you were alive in the 80s, and I, I, re I remember this, I'm old enough to remember this, 
This was the only thing on the poster. If you look at the original theatrical poster, it was just black, had this, and then you know had the mouse type with the credits and who was in it. Does anybody know why? Very close. That's the ultimate reason, but. Yeah, so the name, someone else owned the name Ghostbusters. They so, the rights. so they didn't have the rights to it. So it's legally Columbia Pictures was still trying to figure out if they could get it in time. So that's what they're like, we gotta market this movie. It's coming out in the summer. Like we've spent all this money. So that's why they started to put it together because they had no idea whether or not they would actually be able to use the name. Um, but then the second thing, and this is something that I love, like one thing that I think we found out is the more we've done this stuff is just how often things go full circle. Mm -hmm. So the guy who designed this logo is a designer named Michael C. Brooks, and he passed away maybe about 10 years ago. But he was the first official art director of National Lampoon Magazine. So if any of you have ever seen the, the famous cover with the, the dog with the gun pointed at its head, and it's like, if you don't buy this magazine, this dog gets it. He, the same guy, did that. And if any of you remember National Lampoon's vacation and the deluxe family truckster, the pea green station wagon, he actually made that too. All the same guy. So like, I love this guy. So you, you know, you just think about, this stuff in pop culture, and th this isn't an accident, right? This guy was also like a legitimate designer. He worked at an ad agency for a while. So like he knew the pop culture zeitgeist. He also knew the advertising, you know, techniques. So we knew how to make a really, really good logo. And then just to wrap up really quickly, what I also love about this is if you remember the movie, this is the what they used for the business in the movie. It was on their uniforms and on their car and everything else. So it actually worked as a business logo. So it's just perfect. So to go a little more highbrow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I got you out there. So we like to trade off. Sometimes we get a lowbrow, one goes highbrow. I'm going to go highbrow. Uh, anybody not recognize this band? Yeah, same thing. Um, from 1976, this album is called Rock and Roll Over. It was the third album that Kiss released in 1976. So, crazy, right? Um, not my favorite Kiss album. That would be Destroyer, in case anybody cares, um, which was released earlier. But this is my favorite album cover, done by Michael DeRed, famous um, illustrator, um, graphic designer, um, artist, letterer, born in the Coney Island area of New York and influenced by fairs, wheels of fire, things like that, and was commissioned to do this and saw KISS as that traveling sort of Knights in Satan service circus. Um, so he sort of took all that and put it into a little bit of a comic book form. Now, that's only part of the story. The interesting thing, as you can see, is this album can be viewed four different ways. So no one band member is on top. So the band was in the middle of disintegrating at this time. They had gotten hugely popular, crazy unnaturally popular, and uh, some members, uh, as we would say here in the South, were feeling a little bit too big for their britches. Um, so, this was a way to make everybody equal and create a unique design solution at the same time. So I didn't know that until we started digging into it. I just thought it was a cool way to do an album cover. But when you hear the behind the scenes story of they were really trying to keep peace with everybody, I was like, wow, that's like, they took a problem and they made it into something I think is a lot cooler. I think one, if I remember, one other crazy thing is like, didn't Gene Simmons see like a Japanese design magazine and he was like, he loved the cover of it? Yeah, so, like, oh, uh, yeah, like what, <laughs> what, like rock artist like says, what brings a Japanese design magazine to life? I mean, it's just the whole thing's insane. Okay, all right. So you guys have managed to survive this far, which we uh, congratulate you for. So uh, it's time to get into like, how does this actually work, right? So how do you guys? Pull all of this together. So, um, we want to give you a, a few uh, examples or tips for, for how we approach storytelling. Um, so, the first one, I think, hopefully, with some of our ideas, um, as you've seen, is 
start with something that's, that's big enough to provide the flexibility, right? So you, we don't want to paint ourselves into a corner with anything uh, from the get-go, right? So when we start to have some of our brainstorming conversations, we always make sure, like if you listen to a typical episode, We've done things that are called bar snacks lately where we've done little interviews with friends of ours, but a typical episode is where we take two objects, sometimes they're, they're sort of unified, sometimes they're more disparate, and we try to figure out like what makes them work, like why are these two things going together, why are we having this conversation? So um, we want to make sure that we choose something, we have a big enough topic that we know we're going to be able to find artifacts that will basically support that topic. And so that then gives us a little bit of latitude or flexibility to look at things from a pop culture perspective, not just like, oh, I love the colors on this or, oh, you know, whatever, like this typeface or whatever, but more like, hey, I'll bet you if we stopped somebody on the street and showed them this thing, they would remember this. And so we think that's really huge in terms of relatability. And then going back to what we said earlier, that what is we think about the narrative structure of how can we get these couple things and find a connection between them in some way? And sometimes the connections are looser and sometimes they're tighter. And all of that is wrapped in a conversation of a couple buddies hanging out in a bar. So the conversation weaves a little bit here and there, but we try really hard to keep it on topic and not rambling because both of us are sort of averse to podcasts where it's just you dropped in on a conversation and, and you don't really know where it's going. Or when it's going to end. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the big thing. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, we try to choose fun topics, but also topics that have some shelf life to them, right? So, podcasts are a very long tail sort of medium. So, we're not going to ever do a, a hot take on something that's happening in the news, right? That's just not what we're all about. Like, we we really like things that have staying power. Things like, oh, I don't know, a 30-year-old movie logo, for example, or a 60-year-old uh, hotel sign or something like that. So um, so that's just a big part of it for us, right? So like, here's some examples of some things that we that we tend to really, really like, right? So if, if you guys have listened at all to any of our podcasts, for both Todd and I, our lone star is Airplane. Everybody is, smiling when that is came the up movie, is my favorite, is the movie, the best friend. Yeah, yeah. As, as, as this, yeah. we absolutely love it. Iconic. Yeah, beyond yeah. iconic. Like, it, we still laugh our asses off at this movie yeah. all the time. Um, the Holiday Inn sign, like we just talked about, like super cool thing that everybody remembers. Like, I guarantee you, go back, look at your home movies. Like, when I was doing research on this, people were had home movies posted on YouTube of when they were on vacation, like Super 8 footage and they had this sign in them. Like, this is part of everybody's fabric of their childhood. Um, Mad Magazine, in case you guys hadn't figured it out by now, we love Mad Magazine. Todd has a story about this particular issue, actually. Uh, my wife is a huge Star Trek fan. We uh, went to Atlanta to Dragon Con just so she could meet Bill Shatner. We call him Bill now. <laughs> and, uh, and she got my copy of this Mad Magazine signed, and now it's she has it framed in her closet. Yeah. And what'd you say, her closet? In her closet, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, this is one of Todd's loves, uh, Big Boy. I love Big Boy, yeah. yeah. Right, yeah, absolutely. Um, we also love wacky packages, wacky. right? So the only thing better than products, iconic products, are iconic product parodies, right? So it turns out this yeah. same geniuses uh, behind Mad Magazine were also behind these. You know, wacky packages were done for tops. As well as, well... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> not that they had nothing to do with <laughs> Shepard Fairy's yeah. sure. But what was funny about this, it, Todd, I'll tell you what, here's something I learned about Todd doing this podcast. This guy loves a good lawsuit. <laughs> Give me, show me the drama. Yeah, I'm so like, yeah, it's a beautiful poster. To this episode, it's 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 a it's a it's a pop culture episode that centers around a lawsuit. It was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was he was digging the dirt. So even things like advertising characters, like so this this in case you're wondering, this is electricity. Like, like it's like electricity personified, right? Ready kilowatt. Like, what the hell? Like, so we we dug into that story because this is something I remember from being a little kid. 
And then, uh, as you mentioned, the garbage pail kids garbage from, from, the, from the makers of wacky packages. Yeah, same people, same Who artists. Knew? Yeah, right. Say just ten years apart. And this, of course, was building on. This was building on the whole Cabbage Patch Kids thing. And I hated Cabbage Patch Kids. I'm a child of the '80s. Hated them. And so I, hook, line, sinker, and pier. My brother and I were all in on garbage pail kids. Yes. <laughs> Um, the last bit is for us to try to tell it in with as unique of a voice as possible. Um, ours, hopefully you're getting is we don't take ourselves too seriously. We love and honor um, the, the giants of design and pop culture that came before us and we try to have a little bit of fun in doing that. Absolutely. Um, so we obviously put out our own content as well. So just a little bit of uh, idea about that. So when we post a new episode the day before, uh, social media, whatever, we tend to post like a little teaser. And part of the fun is to get people to guess what that actually is, right? So we always drop little hints, little visual hints. And then of course, we'll reveal the next day the episode drops what it actually is. So in this case, this was our street culture episode. And if you look at it, you'll see we got Ed Big Daddy Roth. We also have the Santa Cruz Screaming Ham, which I love. I see you have your Pearl undershirt. So I have my Santa Cruz yeah. screaming hand <laughs> socks. So um, I was just yeah. about to say there was someone running around with that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so you know I absolutely you know love just just skate street culture and skateboarding, celebrating just the listeners, just the, the purity of the podcast, right? Um, the fact telling people we have a YouTube channel, throwing it online, giving people different ways to listen, as we talked about a few minutes ago, inserting ourselves into pop culture. This is something we posted on Christmas. So I love the movie A Christmas Story. I grew up in Cleveland where this was filmed. I remember when this movie was released. We went and saw it in the theater a bunch. And so like, what's better than to insert ourselves in the flick getting this uh, tux, stung, t tongue stuck to the flagpole? Easy for me to say, my tongue was stuck to the flagpole. Um, also, um, you know, definitely thinking about uh, celebrating our listeners, like, right? Who wrote that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we, we pay people pretty well. Come talk to us afterwards yeah. and we'll figure it out. Um, and then our ugly moms doing events like this, of course. But then also, and fingers crossed, we'll see if the audio works. We always post audiograms. We try to give people samples of what it is we're up to. So this is an excerpt from an episode about secret codes that we did that people seem to really like. All right, we'll see if it works. Check, check, one, two. And it might, might not work. So, well basically what we're talking about, if it doesn't, it doesn't work, um, it has to do with the fact that uh, you were talking about, I think, the things buried in money. money. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, we're talking about that. And and the conspiracy theories. Yes, yeah, conspiracy theories. If it can be a lawsuit theory. or something completely made up like a conspiracy theory, I'm all into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then in this same episode, I also talk about uh, hobo signs. So, if you look at, um, you can see like the little hobo illustration up there, and then you can start to see like the dollar bill stuff. So, sorry that that didn't work. Come see us later. We'll play it for you one at a time. Let's <laughs> move this along a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Quickly, how do we work together? Because we're two opinionated assholes, as you see. Okay. Um, so this is uh, how Elliot chooses to work with me. Yeah, so, okay. <laughs> so Todd grew up and still loves Prince. Loves Prince. Right. So, I don't know, about a year ago or something, in the New Yorker, there's this article, The Impenetrable Genius of Prince, right? So I'm like, hey, I think you really like this article. And so I sent it to him. You know what I got in response? Bupkis. No thank you, no nothing, like cool article, no thumbs up, nothing. So, um, then Best Friends Day rolls around a few days later, still haven't heard anything. You know, guy went dark on me. So Todd, I want you to read what I sent to you for Best Friends Day. I put together a social post for Best Friends Day tomorrow, which you apparently forgot about, you ungrateful piece of shit. <laughs> Alright, but we made up. Yeah. Because this was the post we had for Best Friends Day. <laughs> Todd says he was looking at daylight, by the way. Yeah. All right. Let's move quickly. We play to our individual strengths. Um, we're each, Elliot is great at editing the stories together. I'm a musician, so I do our, uh, the music and kind of do the mastering. Um, Elliot really does everything. He just, I kind of am the face of the organization. Um, go ahead. <laughs> the face of the organization. Yeah. yeah, the ass of the organization. 
Um, we divide, we divide and conquer. So like, you know, we figure out what we're good at. We parse things out, as we mentioned. Like, we make a list. We're doing research. We do different aspects of, of getting it all together. Collaborating with two creatives, you got to be honest with each other. You got to be able to say that ain't working. Move on, and um, we have no problem with that. Yeah. So like, one example is like, we'll we'll definitely there are iconic things we want to talk about, and we'll bring the idea up to the other person. But then the other person will say, well, this is great. There's a lot that's been written about this over the years. That's why it's iconic. But what are we going to bring to the table that's unique above and beyond what's already been said? And we'll have to try to defend that with one another because that's what the listener would think when they were approaching it, right? And if we can't do that, we just drop it. We can say, well, I love this, but it's not podcast worthy, right? And then what? We stay curious, right? You got it. Yeah, because again, that addiction to Wikipedia. Um, so yeah, try to look for that that nugget of interest in there. Absolutely. And lastly, I think. Yeah, we have fun, fun, right? If we're you know, this is we remind ourselves of this all the time. If we're not having fun, why do it, right? So there, there just has to be a creative outlet that's just that brings you joy. Yeah. So if you think our audio might work, we might do a. Yeah, let's uh, let's we're see. Do an let's experiment. See if we can figure here. this out. Well, let me let me jump back in here super okay. quick and let me make sure because this is kind of important. The audio has to work for this part. I guess this leaves me out here alone again. <laughs> Hi, where are you from? <laughs> Doing problems. Yes. Okay. This is. You got it working? No, but I know why it's not working. Oh, oh well, there you go. So, what's your favorite conspiracy theory? Oh man, the money ones are so good. It is so good. Um, it, I mean, everybody knows like it's the um, the, the Masons are responsible, uh, and uh, and that's true, by the way. Um, but there's a lot of little things that are giveaways that are just crazy. Um, my favorite one is um, in the the pyramid. If I had a dollar, I'd show you, but I don't because. Um, Podcasting ain't paying, uh, but it's like there's there's faces and there's hidden messages within the pyramid and stuff. Okay, I think I figured Thank it out. I think I figured it out. Okay, okay. are we ready? We're ready right. to get So we're gonna started. we're gonna show you a little bit. This is we're gonna do a really quick mini podcast, podcast episode. For you both. All right, is this supposed to work? Yeah. Okay. Supposed to be going. Yeah. I, I've been practicing saying hazium, and then of course when I get to it, I'm like hazium blah blah blah. blah. Do you want me to do anything different? Yeah, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my favorite part of your vocal is when you're not doing it. <laughs> my, my favorite part of our podcast is when you're not talking. <laughs> Two designers walk into a bar. A place where pop culture creatives discover design icons that make us tick. And we share a few drinks along the way. Today, we look at a couple logos with hidden graphic treasures. And the funny thing is, some of these hidden treasures have eluded us and remained hidden. So grab another Hazium IPA or Sexual Chocolate Imperial Stout from Foothills Brewing. And then join us and AIGA Triad as we mosey on back into the bar. All righty. So we're in a bar, you're in a bar. We're going to do a little bit here. Um, starting with some questions here. I want you to name these songs that I'm going to share lyrics with you. All right. This is going to be good. First one. Hold me closer, Tony Danza. You know that song? Yeah. Good one. All right. Go ahead. Saving his life from this warm sausage tea. Classic. Ah, nailed it, Jerry. Next one. Wrapped up like a douche, another rumor in the night. Yeah, got it. Good one. Good one. All right. If you change your mind, Jackie, Jackie Chan. Chan. It's the first thing in line. Jackie Chan. Take a chance on me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Jackie Chan is on me is what I like. <laughs> the girl with colitis goes by. Uh, I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Lucy and the sky with colitis. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So these are, you know, these have a name. Do you know what these are called? Like misheard lyrics? Uh, uh, oh, they're like auditory hallucinations. What is it, Elliot? Like a That's a great name for it, buddy. Come on, degree. Come on, degree. Come on, degree. So, 
Uh, basically, what a monogreen is, is a mishearing or misinterpretation of a phrase in a way that gives it new meaning, right? So it's not just, I didn't understand it, you're assigning new words to it. So monogreens are most often created by a person listening to a poem, a song, like we just um, you know, showed you. Uh, the listener being unable to clearly hear the lyrics substitutes other words and it creates a new meaning as a result of these word substitutions. Well, today, Tom and I, geniuses that we are, we have a couple logo mondegreens that we would love to share with you guys. Yeah, yeah this is like full disclosure, confessional. Do you, you may, Thank you. absolutely. All right, so I'm gonna start. Um, so I was behind this truck uh, one day. This truck. Um, let me ask you a quick question before I get into this. Can you guess about how many branded messages that you're exposed to in a single day? This is the educational part of it. Oh, random guess. 3,600. Higher. 3,600. <laughs> They're higher. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> felt for that. About 10,000 now. Uh, a study hasn't been done since 2007. At that time, it's five to 7,000. So um, Forbes estimates it's about 10,000 now. So I was behind one of these messages um, at this truck. And I live in a little bit of an 18-bit world, as you can tell. But that's, that's a different type of story. And I got to thinking. That's the metaverse, right? That's a truck from the metaverse. Yeah, and I got to thinking, wow, must have chips. Branded message, must have chips. So I was looking at this logo, and I thought, well, I wonder kind of how that developed over time. I remember Tostitos. We buy Tostitos, right? And so I did a little bit of research. Uh, started in 1979. Um, when the product was launched. And as you can see then, they looked like they were known as, oops, uh, will you back me up there? Yeah, sure. Right. Don't hit that. And you can see in 1979, um, they were known as Tostitos and Tostitos, attorneys at law. It's really more official looking. Um, all the way up to 2003 when they were like, how many logos do we have? It doesn't matter. Put them all together and make it one. So now since 2012, um, this is the one they've been using and you're probably really familiar with it. What struck me was this thing. Let's all say together what that is. Two guys playing a bongo, right? <laughs> is that what you see? No, Chris does not. Yeah. I've only ever seen a clown face. Yeah, clown okay. face. Oh, clown I like face. that. I yeah. like that, yeah. Uh, um, sure. I thought it was two guys playing a bongo. Frito-Lay, they're based in um, Texas. Um, Matthew Conahay is based in Texas, plays bongos. I thought there was a connection there. Turns out, anyway, two guys playing a bongo. Someone said, you're being stupid. It's not two guys playing a bongo. It's two guys sharing a giant chip, twice the size of their head. And I'm like, well, okay, that does make a little bit more sense, right? Um, so, my takeaway on this is, first of all, the logo works. It's readable, uh, whether you can see this part or not um, and uh, it didn't really matter that I thought it was two guys playing a bongo I read the logo wrong somebody reads it as two guys sharing a giant chip twice the size of their head um, the other takeaway is evidence beyond a shadow of doubt and I love Tostitos chips evidence shows that Tostitos to bring the party what you really need is bongo playing and not eating chips <laughs> exactly Okay. Or Matthew McConaughey. Or Matthew McConaughey. Okay. Bongos. So we did an episode on the Olympics. Has anyone listened to that episode yet? Because you're all going to listen to it when you leave tonight on your drive home. Okay. So um, does anyone, does this image look familiar? Does anyone remember which Olympic Games this came from? Sydney. Sydney, exactly. Okay. Sydney, Australia. So um, beautiful logo for that Olympics, right? I think we can agree, right? And I thought it represented a beautiful Olympic activity. I mean, I think we can all agree, this is the logo, right? It's, it's a gymnast, it's a ribbon dancer. It's what Todd does when no one's watching. One-legged ribbon dancer. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, 
I, you know, the legs up on that oh, one too. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Turns out I was dead wrong. It's not that at all. Um, so what do people see? What do you guys see when you're when you're looking at this? The torch bear. Boomerang and pterodactyl. Okay. <laughs> pterodactyl, boomerangs. All right. Yeah. So, okay. See, like you guys are seeing all the things I never I never looked at. Sydney Opera House, right? Okay. Uh, Roof line of the Sydney Opera House. Man, okay, that's pretty clever. That that checks out given the photo I showed you guys earlier. Um, what else? Okay. Boomerangs. Someone said boomerangs. Give that person a prize, an 80. Actually, give the Sydney Opera House person a prize too. Yeah, boomerangs. Uh, you know, not one boomerang, of course, not two boomerangs, but in fact, three boomerangs. I saw zero boomerangs, so here we are. So, boomerang, I've heard of that. I think Australia is the home of the boomerang. Everybody gets a boomerang. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, Sydney Opera House is not only in there once, but it turns out it's actually in there twice. Yep. Like, did you see that? It's in the pant leg of the gymnast or the torchbearer, boomerang holder, whatever it is this person's doing, right? So what do these two things have in common? Okay, I think we can agree they both depict the human form, or human forms in your case, because you had two bongo players. Maybe. And you, yeah. There's hidden stuff that keeps us engaged, right? There's these subtle messages in there that maybe we don't get first uh, time we look at them, or in our case, the 50th time we've yeah. looked at them. Um, both logos do their job pretty well, right? Like, so everybody knows the Tostitos logo. Everybody remembers the Sydney Olympics logo. Um, but I think the big takeaway that we can both agree on, you need to eat more chips, and I apparently need to watch more gymnastics. That's right, that's right. Okay, so. As we wrap up, we just want to thank everyone for coming tonight. So we really appreciate it. Thank you. And we want to thank uh, Triad. We want to also thank Foothills Footnote for uh, uh, allowing us to be here. And uh, we are here to answer any and all questions uh, that you folks have. Uh, beyond why did this take so long? We um, so we actually answer um, listener emails um, and I have a couple to get you started if you're um, uh, wanting if to think you're of curious. If, yeah. if you need the, the um, skids greased a little bit. Uh, okay, so Dear Todd and Elliot, love your podcast because you talk about the same things I like. Question, are you worried you're going to get sued by more Drucker's estate for stealing this art? <laughs> oh, we could go back. Oh, wait a minute, here, turn around. Oh no! Well, we sort of we sort of hit here. We'll go back, but yeah. we'll we'll show our little our little character um, real quick. But the answer is so you can see him up there. The answer is nope. That's a Don Martin ripoff. That's not Mort Drucker at all. <laughs> yeah, we no, were talking about a completely different guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Todd and Elliot, I love listening and always come away learning something. Go figure. Though I thought I knew about your topics well. How do you find these hidden gems? Well, we showed the Blues Brothers thing. We need to go back and, and show it again because it didn't have the sound the first time. Uh, yeah, right, right. Okay. Um, dear two designers, is Todd as much of a hick as he sounds? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Short answer, yes. Yeah. I, actually, I, all right. Go ahead. I wrote that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, last one. Hey there. Great podcast. I always look forward to listening. Kind of personal question. Do you make a lot of money doing this? Nope. <laughs> None. Yeah. There's, uh, there's a lot of cash flow. The problem is it flows away from us. <laughs> <laughs> we need a better accountant, clearly. Uh, yeah. Uh, any questions we can answer uh, that you have? Yes. Logistically, getting your podcast off the ground if you were going to give advice to someone that's going to do some similar adventure, what advice would you give? That's a great question. Sure. Um, I would say, again, go, going into, like, so you're thinking of, like, the technical aspects or, like, coming up with an idea? So, I'm, I have two companies. Uh -huh. the, the accounting firm, but I also have a real estate company, and I'm going to do a podcast talking about all the crazy shit that people do. Right when you're buying or selling a home and okay. just really get an out of what like 
obviously, I've got all the time in the world to do shit, so it's like I can just make this happen, right? But the question is, is like, what? What's the biggest hurdle? What's the thing that you would say that, to to think about? So when we did our first episode, so our our first episode we did about about two years ago, give or take, and. We probably recorded and re-recorded it six times. <clears throat> and the reason we did that is because we had to figure out the structure, we had to figure out the time footprint, we had to figure out, like you can see, we're still working with like audio at times, oh, there's a live event, but like still figuring out the techniques around that, around like, I knew nothing about garage band or sound design or like any of that stuff. And this was like a great way, to your point, during like the pandemic, we're like, we've got nothing but time. So you start to explore a new medium. Like we knew we had a good idea, like you were just mentioning with your idea, but it's like, how do you get it out into the world? How do you birth the baby? So we had to first figure out, does this have legs? Like, can it like go beyond like one or two episodes or whatever? Are there topics you know, that we can use to extend this? Then the second thing is, what is gonna be our format or our foot, what's the formula, right? Like, yeah. So we figured out the formula, and what we would do is we'd record kind of like demos, and then like we'd let our wives listen to them, or like close friends listen to them, like, what do you think, this is too long, you guys are rambling too much, tighten this up, add music here, give me a break here as a listener, like whatever. So get people you trust to give you feedback. And then the third thing we had to figure out was like how to actually syndicate it. Like how do you get it on all those platforms? That's the that biggest like? challenge. And so we um, we looked at, we ended up choosing a platform called Podbean. There are a bunch of them out there, but we evaluated different ones. There's like Anchor, there's like all these different ones. And you know, the at the end of the day, the best thing is to just try something. Like get it out there, try it. You're gonna make mistakes, learn from those mistakes, refine. And, and whatever. And, and it's really funny because you might go into it with your intent thinking it's gonna go one way, and then the people who end up listening to it or giving you feedback, you can be like, oh, I never thought about this, or this is an interesting topic, or this is an interesting idea. So you gotta kind of be open to serendipity a little bit because once it sort of goes out into the world, it's really not yours anymore, sure, right? You know, you're kind of guiding it, but it becomes its own thing, so. Yeah. That's great. I think there was, was, was there a question here? Yes, George. So as, obviously, you've got the material to pull from, but as, um, as things pop up and as you try and find that line, are there anything like contemporary that issues or, I should say issues, you know, like pop current events. things that pop up that you kind of feel like, oh man, this feels like it's iconic, maybe we can talk about it, or do you all kind of have like a hard line? Well, um, I would say, what, what would you say the most contemporary thing we did was maybe like Shepherd Fairy was the whole thing. Have you done anything? Yeah, so we, we tie to stuff that's happening, but it's generally not the jumping off point. Um, and I think more of that is just what we think people will be familiar with. Um, like we did, when we did um, our Olympics episode, you know, it had nothing to do with the Sydney Olympics, we actually did another episode, and it was right when the Olympics were about to start in. Uh, Tokyo or, or wherever, Russia or wherever the hell they just, where were they? <laughs> like, I don't even remember now. But wherever they just were, we were, we were doing it in anticipation of that. Um, so, you know, sometimes we'll loosely try to tie it into current events, but the beauty of it is the Olympics, the modern Olympics started in 1896. So there's like all kinds of, you know, you can go back and, and listen to all sorts of different historic aspects of that, right? So it's like people are already talking about the Olympics and they already have that interest chinned up how do we start to coattail on that, right? So, so I would say that's the answer versus more like, oh, the gap came out with a new logo and it sucks, right? Yeah, like yeah because there's there's not as much there's there's not as much of a runway with that. You know, we make stuff and we put it out there. Um, we're we're all creators and we put it out there in the world, but it takes a while for it to gain some traction and some history to mean something. So we do try to tie it into things that might be happening or um, different aspects of modern pop culture. But the reality is, is there's not a lot of history in um, a new Gap logo yet, other than I hate it. I love it. Fuck you. Fuck you back. <laughs> right. All right. Well, that's but, the shortest but that's, podcast. That's just us brainstorming. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that's a great that. question, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it certainly is. Like, you would think pop culture should be, like, things happening right now. Um, 
and we we've got plans for things um, that will get a little bit closer to that. Yeah. Yeah. But this is sort of related, but I mean, have people started to pitch you ideas or their products yet? And if not, no, but please send them to us. <laughs> Hell okay, yeah. So if not, for, like for it, coverage, it's, it's sort of the model. Yeah, for coverage. Yeah, like, yeah. So like, uh, the model of your podcast such that you would, you know, accept those types of, of pitches, or is it really just what you two want to focus on? We've gotten a ton of um, people that uh, that want to guest. Here uh, and yeah. there, I mean, it's that hat stuff you get on LinkedIn. Yeah. It's like this is John Doe, and he was the president of this company, and he's great on podcasts. But he has nothing to do with it. Do we yeah, all? Yeah. So I mean, we'll podcast. take anybody's money. Let's just be. Let's call it space. <laughs> space. <laughs> but so far, we have not met that match yet. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think to answer your question in a maybe a, a different way, like if if a company that has an iconic like Tom loves pets, right? He loves some Pez. So if Pez approached us and said, hey, you guys need to do something about candy, and we want to have you talk about Pez. I, I think, again, if, if it came to that, I think we could do that, because Pez, think about all the dispensers and yeah. pop culture and the characters, and like that makes sense, right? Like, no one would be like, well, this seems off. Why are they talking about Pez? They'd be like, well, yeah, I had Pez growing up, right. you know? Yeah. So I think if it, if it lines up, yeah, we'd be as, happy to do it. As, cheesy as it sounds as chilling as it sounds i would love for us to be part of that conversation in something where um whomever was making their rounds chilling their latest project or something you know? yeah. but we ain't there yet um, yeah. i wish we were yeah, exactly. i know i know I wish yeah. we were. Right. Absolutely. you could have anybody come on as a guest chris in the shop Without a <laughs> As a matter of fact, Chris, come on up. <laughs> Bill Murray. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I'll tell you. I think, um, and and we actually dropped a hint to it. Uh, I wouldn't mind having Chuck Anderson. Yeah. Because I think he kind of it's the it's the vintage ad stuff, but he's also done used that in contemporary ways and. He's done things, of course, thinking about French paper and all the things he did for that, but he's also done things well beyond that, right? He's had a number of clients, Entertainment Weekly, which is where that poster was from. And so he kind of like checks the boxes for me. He's somebody who pops into my head. Um, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. You know? I, I mean, really anybody. Yeah. Um, that I think, again, if it makes sense, like if the work they're doing contributes to the, the pop culture conversation, I think it's worth it. We just did, in our season hiatus, we did a, um, these short segments called Bar Snacks, where we basically interviewed three friends, Kyle Webster um, being one, um, Lenny Terenzi, um, artist, illustrator, designer um, in Raleigh, uh, and Terry Marks out of Seattle, uh, all friends, and so it was a it was just kind of a shoot the shit conversation. And those guys are known in, in various circles and I would love for us to extend that to with other people. We're looking at now, just as a lead into our third season, uh, we're gonna do something a little different where we're gonna do these sort of a mini series. So based on a, a creative minute in time and we're looking at the possibility of bringing an expert in. For instance, um, the Andy Warhol factory era, or the beat culture, or um, the grunge era, something like, you know, that's big that we can talk about how was, how did that affect visuals, um, music, movies, all that stuff. So we're, we're thinking about that now, and we were just having a discussion before this. We don't, we, we kind of cringe a little bit when it gets academic. I mean, I made a joke about Debbie Norman earlier, but, um, <laughs> It, it, that's not us, you know. We 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 want to we want to bring a little bit of a of an educated slant to this lowbrow world that you know has been good to us. Have you ever thought to live stream? Have we ever thought to live stream? Uh -huh. uh, did you see what we did earlier? <laughs> 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 this was working. Who would, us us this <laughs> who would you get? Who would you get to play us? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you we, see this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have, we have perfect faces for radio, yeah. we've been told. Um, <laughs> we, we have some ideas. We have ideas uh, for right now for our YouTube. We're basically just doing audio with uh, some some pictures. Episode art. Um, yeah. But 
Uh, we'd love to spend some time in making that a little bit more of like a series, maybe animated. It just takes time. But um, yeah, a lot of podcasters are, it's a video of them sitting around talking, and I couldn't yeah. think of anything more boring. That's <laughs> yeah, just not that interesting. I should probably like a, I hear a couple of people talking. Yeah. We bring down, they say, they say you were watching, watching you Damn, like, you should have much more audience. You deserve much more audience. I agree. Right. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, you gotta give him a sticker. Yeah, yeah. Give him a magnet. Give him a sticker. Give him two magnets. I've got a dollar or something. <laughs> 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 this makes something more yeah. realistic. Yeah, and it, it's. I mean, I, well, I, humbly, I, I agree. I, I think, I think we. Uh, I, in our podcast, we edit ourselves, <laughs> so, so it flows a little bit better. Um, and I think that we we balance it so it's not just for designers. Um, right. I mean, we have we have tons of people that um, that are friends and and people that email us that are that are just normal people, like not designers, <laughs> and, that, um, so, and they love that pop culture aspect of it. And I would love for it to be exposed to more people. Yeah, I will say, though, thank you for, for your question, for your comment. I mean, I will say one thing that we do get when we get feedback and reviews and everything is people do say, like, these guys genuinely like each other. Like, the, the it's authentic. Like, it's not, oh, let's put these two people in a room and see what happens. It's like, <laughs> hi, yeah. what do you want to talk about? You know, it's not robotic. It's what? not scripted. So my wife watches Nate Bargatze's podcast, Nate Land. Do you guys know who Nate Bargatze is? It can mean love Nate Bargatze. There's four guys sitting around a table talking and not really about much, but Nate's famous and it's huge, you know, audience. And I'm like, come on, you know, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So does the podcast like kind of save you from the day to day as a designer? Does the information actually inform your design process? Or is it a way to get away from, you know? Designer. You saw the hot dog poster, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I think it, I mean, I just answer for myself. I mean, I think it depends on my mood or my day or whatever. I mean, I think, like, you know, going back to something that we presented, like, the goal is to have fun. Like, if it's too burdensome, it's not worth doing. And we try to work far enough in advance we'll like batch things we'll batch recordings we'll batch you know edits and stuff like that so it's never like well a few times we've been scrambling to meet our deadlines you know in terms of but typically we're like ahead of the game and so it's never like adding more stress i think at least for me it's probably a little bit of a stress reliever um just just because it's again it's a different medium right it's not visual it's auditory so it's like you're just using a different part of your brain to figure stuff out. And, and But going back to what Todd said with regard to the editing and with regard to the storytelling, you know, we, we have this objective, we make these recordings, whatever, but then we have to kind of like, like, it's like, you know, the block of marble. We know David's in there somewhere and it's up to us to start chiseling away at it to get to whatever is going to be inside of it. And so that editing is, is really fun, at least for me, because you got to kind of be a little bit ruthless. And also, there's usually some pretty funny outtakes. So like our episodes always open with a cold open, where we're just like fumbling around, just like you saw tonight, where we're doing stuff. But it always is pretty funny. And we think that it allows people to say, oh, these guys are just normal people. They're screw ups. They're kind of funny. And so, like what Todd was just saying, we're not like overly academic. We're not in some ivory tower somewhere. And hopefully, it's relatable to anyone who happens to be listening. It's like you're sitting around listening to friends tell yeah. a story. Yeah, yeah it's two, two, it's two, two yeah. designers walk into a bar, yeah. right? It's not two designers hang out at the library. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't happen. <laughs> yeah, just spin out of the library can be quite exciting. That's yeah, what yeah. podcast. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that'll be our crosstown rivals. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, um, the uh, my day job, I, um, I I work for a global company, and I manage a group of about thirty creatives. Um, so this is a good reminder of why I got into this, um, because I don't do anything related to this in my day job. 
and you know, it's like every day. <laughs> and it's like, okay, all right, let's talk about Mad Magazine. For a bit. And so for me, it's um, it's it's harkens back to when I found everything cool and fresh and and wonderful. How the hell did they do that? And like, I want to copy that and learn from that. And it's just different from my day job now. So uh, for me, it's a it, it's a good remembering of what I love. Yeah, there's always, I mean, good design, good creative, regardless of your age, there's always a sense of magic or a sense of wonder, like how did this get into the world? Mm -hmm. And like, you know, again, going back to some of the things we're always looking at, the signs and the magazines and the trading cards, and it's all like, oh man, these things are here, and, and even today they still bring us joy, right? They just have that shelf life, that staying power. They're, they're like these things that you can always point to and say like, I want to try to do something as good as that, right? Whatever that is. Um, just like, again, you know, um, the, the sound element screwed up, but you know, we have Animal House, we have the Blues Brothers. Those are like Ghostbusters, like Airplane. Like, we love these movies. Like, they're just, um, you know, like my son will watch all these movies with me and like he gets it and it click. So it's this multi-generational thing. I mean, my dad was the first one I saw the Blues Brothers. My dad was the first one who took me to see Ghostbusters, you know? So it's it's almost like this multi-generational pass in the baton. And I, you know, and I will say like, I don't think there's ever a conversation you and I have where we're not cracking each other up. Right. Like even if we've got a, a super shitty day, for whatever reason, half the reason you talk to your friend is they can lift your spirits and make you laugh a little bit, right? So, and then if we can share some of that joy and some of that wonder through the podcast with other people, all the better, right? Hopefully it's contagious. So who, who wrote the hot dog book? I'm sorry? Who wrote the hot dog book? Um, Elliot. I was gonna say yeah. it, it, it was a combined. It was it was I mean yeah, I know it was it was it was, it was, it was three guys sitting around a table. <laughs> Punch drunk and yeah, just, just trying like, to see what exhausted. stupid stuff we could put together. And, <laughs> and it, it was like one person would say a pun, and then the other one would say an even I worse pun, and that. then the other one would say an even worse pun, and then we're just cracking each other up. We're like, we should actually just write all this down and throw it in something. <laughs> Oddly enough, that's kind of the same way the podcast started. Yeah. <laughs> now that I think about it. Yeah. You know what's funny? As it, so I'm not a designer, but I've worked with a lot of designers and and I think as a non-designer, working with designers and looking at designs that are presented, one of my biggest fears was always that, like, are they playing a joke? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, if I say, yes. I, if I say, like, if I say I really like that one, is it like jokes on me? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, we let, sorry, we, yeah, yeah. sorry, sorry, fellow designers, we we let that over. Yeah. over, over. <laughs> that was. That was like the all scene. Yeah, no, right. the yeah, the that's that's, that's another body. Knights Templar thing. Yeah, that we didn't yeah, know yeah. That. I don't, you know. No, they should. They should be happy if you buy anything. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell them not to enter it into award shows. <laughs> Unknowingly, without telling yeah. the rest of the team yeah. that worked on it. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. So, what else? See, I'll mention sound design way early on the very beginning of this. And, and one of the things I really like about it is, you know, the, the clinking glasses. Sound and the mm -hmm. atmosphere yeah. that, that you all have. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know if you speak to, I guess, the importance of that that, that, that you all kind of weigh. Uh, Thank you for that. It's um, yeah, we appreciate that. That's a, such a subtlety, but but we think it makes it a little different and. We're not going to convince anybody we're really in a bar. I mean, you know that. Right. Right. I mean, we are now. So. <laughs> yeah. But um, for us, because what we found that we really love is setting context. And we were just talking about this earlier. Um, so I'm 10 years older than Elliot. And, and I was saying, like, you have no idea how big Elton John was in the 70s. Uh, Beyonce, Justin Timberlake, Bruno Mars, name them, Elton John, all those plus. And I said, so that's what we're trying to do is to set a place where we can bring people back. And sound is a great way to do that. Um, we have, uh, we have a, a mutual friend who does, who runs an animation studio um, in Atlanta called Primal Screen, and he says, sound is half the picture. And so 
while it's subtle, we want it to be something that puts you in that place. And, you know, if you notice, if you listen to it with earbuds, the, the clinking glass will be on one side or there'll be a beer can opening. Or the way the mix is, like, if you're sitting, you know, if you're in the middle of the table, Todd's on one side of you, I'm on the other side of you. So that's that's So all. it's a little of the, you know, we want to try to put some of that craft in that hopefully people will appreciate. And then when we're telling the stories of, um, Hunting Bigfoot, for instance, you know, there's, there's some beautiful sound design. Some great, I mean, it's authentic, is what it is. Um, Todd's, Todd's field recordings from camping. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, thank you for recognizing that. Yeah, but the goal is like, if you're, if you're just closing your eyes and you're listening before you go to bed at night, you imagine yourself like in the barn hanging out, like you're the third person at the four top table, right? So you're just hanging out listening. Yeah, it's like you're with buddies. If you could have any historical figure alive dead as a guest on the podcast, who would be? God, that's a tough one. Yeah, that's a pretty broad question, yeah. I know. Um, I, you know, I have, an, I have an answer. I do too, and I'm not sure it's... My first answer would be Milton Glaser, but that's a little obvious, probably. Right. But, you know, ain't nothing wrong with that. Right, right. Um, I would, yeah, I would say, I mean, my answer might even be more obvious. I would probably say Steve Jobs. Um, Just because, in my mind, he would totally a, bogart the conversation. You couldn't make it laugh. You couldn't make it laugh. He's coming back from the dead. Like, let the guy yeah. have, have That probably stage. would be a good story. That would be. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh, the, so the hologram of Steve Jobs is yeah. my answer. <laughs> with Matt, two, with two hologram. With two pop. Matt Groening. <laughs> Matt Groening. Yeah, Matt Groening. Yeah. Um, Lauren Bouchard, who does Bob's Burgers. I'm a little bit into cartoons. I would say actually John Landis. I mean, he directed Animal House. He I, directed the William Blues. Gaines. Yeah, the, yes, 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 yes. The original Magazine. publisher of Mad Magazine, William yeah. Gaines. He would oh, be yeah, incredible. Yeah, or even Mort Drucker. Like, yeah. Mort Drucker would be great. Yeah. Um, yeah, see, this is, and this, remember our, our conversation earlier or stuff, like this is how it starts. Hey, would you yeah. ever, whatever. And it just builds on itself. Did you ever? Right? Most of course, for example, if I want to invite somebody and be a little more serious, okay, like, I don't know, you suffer a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, so, and being serious, what will be your approach to be more serious? If you have an approach, or like if you, if you really have to just be more serious, that's that's a fantastic question, and uh, some of the things that we have referenced, um, they're from a different time, and it certainly would not represent who we are uh, as people today, and we're we're quick to say that, um, you know, and, and it doesn't necessarily take away from the impact that things have. I'm trying to think of a great example. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but I know we've had that conversation where, you know, we would say that was then and this is now, but it's certainly, a, I, well, I think we could all agree if you've seen the movie Airplane, there's some things that are not politically correct in there that right. might not play. Right. Doesn't or, mean, or Animal House. Or Animal House. Or, <laughs> doesn't mean, or Mad Max. <laughs> <Mac Ghost, laughs> but, but it doesn't mean that it, it wasn't culturally significant. And, you know, we, we certainly don't condone some of those things, but we appreciate the creativity that went into it. I would say to, you know, the way I would answer that question is that's not our podcast. Like, you know, we, um, like I, we were talking about this the other day, like I tend to put most design podcasts in one of two buckets, and pardon my language here, but I'll, I'll just say it. Um, one bucket is sort of the star fucker podcast. It's like, I'm gonna invite this guest on because everybody loves so-and-so, I won't name any names. Um, but like this person will get on there and then we're gonna get a lot of buzz around this because this is the hot designer right now, right? And then the other one is business fundamentals, right? It's always like, hey, look, I'm gonna tell you how to you know, write a better proposal or the 10 secrets to like getting your social media up and running, your blah, blah, blah. It's all tactical, right? So it's sort of like the ivory tower people you can maybe hope to one day kind of sort of maybe meet at a conference or the in the, in the weeds, like business, make more money, whatever, find better clients. 
And we're not really either of those things. We, we're coming at it more from the artifacts and from the pop culture aspect because that's what delivers delight. Um, so that's really kind of our, our take on it. Like, we're not trying, like, those other things are so well covered. Like, we, we have no interest or desire to go down that road. Like, but, but, you know, it sort of answers the question, like, why did you guys choose these particular things? We'll talk about those things, like the two, like, whatevers. But then we'll also talk about, like, why we specifically chose those things, how they resonate with us, and how, and so hopefully the learning that comes comes through the research, but also through the inspiration. Like these guys are vibing on this. I never looked at these things in this particular way. Now when I leave tonight and drive to wherever I'm going, I'm gonna look at these signs on the side of the road a different way, or I'm gonna look at trading cards a different way, or I'm gonna look at um, movie posters a different way, or logos a different way, right? Um, so I think that's really what it's all about, is the joy of discovery, the joy of inspiration, as opposed to like, celebrity worship or like tactical I don't know whatever like invoice faster which if, you, by if the way we knew do. some if we knew some stars we would maybe. <laughs> hey you have given us way more of your attention than we deserve Absolutely. everyone needs another drink we should wrap this up and continue the conversation more informally is that okay yeah. are you yeah, going to hang around we don't deserve that we don't deserve that. No, we bribed him with stickers. <laughs> all right. Thank you all. This thank has been you, great. Everybody.